Hello everybody and welcome to this week's worship where we are going to explore the story of Abraham and Isaac. So um, if you want to join in with the words then you can find a link to where they are on the diocesan website and if not don't worry you can still join in with a lot of things in our service. So before we start I'm going to light a candle just to remind us that wherever we are and whatever we're doing, Jesus, the light of the world, is always with us. So let's begin. Wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. We come together to say sorry. We come together to say thank you. We come together to ask for God's help. We come together to hear God's story. We come together to celebrate God's love. Wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. So we have a time of saying sorry where we can ask God to help us to start again after all the things this week that we we wish we hadn't done. So like stones that weigh us down and we want to get rid of so that we can walk more easily, I'm gonna hold on to a stone and say sorry to God for the things I've done this week that I wish I hadn't. God loves us and forgives us when we are sorry for wrong things we have done. For times this week when we have made others sad, we are sorry. For times this week when we have not helped others, we are sorry. For times this week when we have not looked after your creation, we are sorry. For times this week when we have been selfish, we are sorry. And to show the clean start that God gives us when he forgives us, put the stone into the water. As we leave these things behind, may God forgive us and give us a new, clean start today. Amen. So now we've said sorry, we have a chance to say thank you to God. So in my jar, I've been writing down things that I've noticed or done this week that I wanted to say thank you for. And you might have a jar like this, or you might want to just take it in turns to say thank you to God for something. So um, now would be a really good time if you wanted to do that, to switch the video off and say thank you and then switch back on again, ready for our story. But I'm going to take um, three things out of here that I am going to say thank you to God for this week. God, you are amazing and you have given us good things. We thank you for all your gifts to us. Thank you for, first one is hospitals. Because my dad has been in hospital this week and it's been really good to know that he's safe and he's getting better and that people are taking really good care of him. So thank you God for hospitals. And the second one says FaceTime. So I've been using FaceTime and um, video calls quite a lot um, to speak to my dad because we're not allowed to visit him in the hospital. So it's been really good to, that, to be able to see him and talk to him. So thank you, God, for FaceTime. Amen. And the second one is, oh, not the second one. The third one is sunshine. It's been a lot more sunny these past few days and that always makes me feel better. So thank you, God, for sunshine. Amen. OK, so now we're going to tell our story, which, as I said earlier, is a story about Abraham and Isaac. And if you want to read this story in the Bible, it's in Genesis chapter 22. And I've written a version which is just a little bit easier for us to understand. Um, OK, so... Abraham walked with God and loved God 
And God had promised Abraham that he would be the head of a huge family with as many people in it as there are stars in the sky. One day, God spoke to Abraham. Abraham? Yes. Take your son Isaac to the mountain and kill him there as an offering to me. Abraham did what God told him, but said nothing to Isaac about what he was going to do. Very early in the morning, Abraham woke Isaac up and they went together up the mountain that God had shown him, gathering wood to burn on the altar as they went. After three days journey, Abraham and Isaac arrived at the place where they would worship God. Isaac was puzzled. He looked around him. Father, he said. Yes, Abraham replied. I can see the wood and the fire, but where is the lamb we will burn for the offering? Abraham looked at his son. God himself will give the lamb for the offering, he said. Abraham built an altar. and he put on it the wood that they had gathered. Then he tied up his son and put him on top of the wood. Abraham lit a torch ready to set fire to the wood and took out a special knife he had been carrying with him. Just as Abraham lifted the knife, an angel called out to him. Abraham, yes, put down your knife and do not hurt your son in any way. I can see how much you trust God and how much you want to do what he says, even enough to kill your own son. Then Abraham heard a rustling nearby and spotted a ram with his horns caught in the bushes. So Abraham took the sheep and burnt it on the fire as an offering to God. When he had finished, Abraham gave the place a name, God provides. Even today, people say, on God's mountain, he will give us what we need. So I wonder, I wonder which part of this story you liked the most. I wonder what surprised you about this story. I wonder what this story makes you feel. I wonder where you are in this story. Do you wonder anything about this story? So you might want to stop the video again and have a chat about some of those questions and then switch back on again for our prayer activity. So I'm just going to move some of my um, characters out of the way slightly. Move the fire out of the way. There we go. So... This story is actually a really difficult one and it's quite hard to hear. It seems that God is asking Abraham to do something really terrible. But Abraham obviously trusts that God has a plan. So he does what God tells him. 
And because Abraham trusts God, God gives Abraham what he needs. So who do you trust and listen to? Have you ever had to trust God? So I'm going to show you now um, something that I have done a few times, especially in assemblies, to um, think about this idea of trust. So normally what I'll do is I'll get a teacher or somebody to sit in a chair and I will do this over the top of them. So I've got here a glass. Now it can be any kind of glass you want and you want to fill it about maybe two thirds full of water and you need a piece of card which is big enough to fit over the top of the glass so you completely cover the top of the glass. So normally what I do is I do this over the top of somebody's head. So you might want to do this over the top, have a practice first, I'd have a practice first and then do it over the top of maybe an adult's head in your house. Let's just see how that works. So what you have to do is put the card on the top of the glass and I'm gonna get up onto my knees to do this because I need to do it right so put your hand very firmly on top of the glass and then you're going to turn the glass over keep your hand on top of the card which is under the glass okay so keep your hand there there might be a little bit of spillage when you do that a little bit of few drips coming out and then let go and you'll see it hovers I'm going to turn it back over again there was a bit of drippage there but you saw how it hovered and the card did not come off, the card stayed stuck there and the water did not fall out onto the table until I tried, until I messed it up there by kind of um, trying to put it back upright again. So have a practice of that and then get somebody to sit underneath your glass while you're doing it and see whether it, whether you can stop it from falling on their head and whether they trust you to do that. So I'm, there is some scientific reason for why it does that and it involves gravity and air pressure and I'm not a scientist so I can't explain it to you. Maybe somebody in your family can. Um, I think it's something to do with these forces, the gravity and the air pressure. And we can't see those forces working, but they are working. And we can't see God, but we know he's there. And he is holding us and supporting us and helping us. And we can trust him to give us what we need. So that's all been a little bit about trust. And I've got water all over the place. But never mind, that will not happen when you do it. If you did it just as I did it to start off with, you're going to be good. But I wonder whether anybody will trust you enough to let you do it over their head. So let's just think for a moment about that trust. And I'm going to bring my um, candle back here to the middle. And let's pray. God, thank you that you want good things for us. Thank you for all those people that we trust to show us what to do and to help us. Thank you that we can trust you to help us too and help us to trust you. Amen. So let's come to a close and let's think about all those people who we trust as we come to God and say, wherever we come together, God is with us. God is here. May God bless us. May we know that we are loved. May we know that we are cared for. May we know God's hope. God is with us. God is here. Amen. <laughs>